folks are, are uh, still joining us and I'm just going to leave all of your all of your faces up on the screen for right now. Rob is an author and a, and a historian. We met Rob, uh, those of us with the Lehigh Valley American Revolution Roundtable, and he came and presented to us. And that was, I don't know, well, last I, year sometime. I don't even know nothing. So uh, if everybody, so Rob, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and go ahead and explain who General Rufus Putnam was. And, and after you're finished, we'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Okay, great, Diane. Um, yeah, I wasn't planning on this book on, on General Israel Putnam. Uh, I approached the... Um, publisher back in, uh, I guess it was 2014, 2015. And I think the reason they uh, decided to publish my book is because for almost 20 years, I owned the website israelputnam.com. Mm. And that was the clincher, okay? They go, this guy must know something about General Putnam if he has a website for that long. Uh, <laughs> and then when I was looking a bit, little bit into Rufus Putnam, I looked up the website and I thought, hmm, maybe I should take out the RufusPutnam.com website. And what do I find? But Diane's the owner of that. And I didn't feel badly because Anne's a direct uh, Diane's a direct descendant and she, she deserves to have the site more than I do. Uh, but anyway, um, I'd like to thank uh, you, Diane, and also Andy, the uh, the president of the roundtable, both for inviting me a couple of years ago to give my talk down to Lafayette. I think it was Lafayette College. Yes. Is that where That's it was? Right. That's right. And um, and for inviting me today to do the introduction. And um, some of you probably have read David McCullough's latest book, The Pioneers. And Rufus Putnam is one of the main individuals in the book. And he, in, in, and he describes very well uh, Putnam's role in the settlement of Ohio after the American Revolution. Um, but at that time, Putnam, Rufus Putnam, was already famous because George Washington had appointed him his chief military engineer. And... In 1776, when the, uh, the American forces were, were holding the British, confining the British to the, to the center of Boston, and Washington couldn't get them off, off the island, um, Rufus Putnam devised a means to build fortifications on the top of the hill south of Boston in the dead of winter. Even though the ground was solid, frozen, uh, he designed fortifications that could lay on top of the frozen ground. And because of what Rufus put, they were able to confront the British, and within two weeks, the British left Boston and never returned for the rest of the war. Hmm. So right after that, uh, Washington promoted him to colonel. Um, and then after that, he sent Rufus down to Rhode Island to uh, build fortifications uh, by Newport, then to Long Island at the time of the Battle of Long Island, and then up the Hudson. And Rufus was kept busy for, for three years doing this. But the most important work of all that he designed was West Point. That Fort Putnam at West Point, and I won't go into details because I'm sure the lieutenant will go into that, but um, that was considered by many, and today is considered by many historians, the most important fort on the Hudson River, and it kept the British from controlling Hudson. All right, two years before that, when Rufus was appointed military engineer uh, and was, was promoted to colonel, Washington said of him, he possesses more practical knowledge in the art of engineering than any other we have in this camp or in this army. That's what Washington thought of Rufus in 1776. Uh, today, to give our tour, we have West Point graduate, Lieutenant Jeffrey Reffert, and this is appropriate because Rufus Putnam and Jeff share a number of things in common. Really? Both volunteered for military service as teenagers. Hmm. Jeff grew up in Ohio, 
And Rufus is recognized by most historians as the father of Ohio and lived for the last 36 years of his life in Ohio. And perhaps most importantly, both have shared a great devotion to and love of the United States of America. Mm. Thank you. Very true, very true. Thank you, thank you, Robert. Jeff and I met, for those of you who, who are just now tuning in, Jeff and I met when he was still a, let's see, are, are you still a teenager? I don't know, but he was a sophomore in high school. I'm 23 now, we met when, okay. I, was, uh, when I was, God, 15, 16 years old. My husband and I were attending a town hall meeting with the current congressman at, at, in our area, um, Bob Gibbs, and we were attending this town hall, and after the meeting was over, I stood up and turned around to see who else was in the meeting, and I see this kid standing behind me, and I looked at him, and I said, what are you doing here? It's it, not, Everybody else was old, had gray hair, and then there was this kid. Well, he was an activist from, from probably before that, from, from the stories that he used to tell me. But um, I gave him my card and, and made sure that we stayed in touch because anyone that young who was interested in politics wanted to get him early. But he has taught me a lot about dedication and devotion to a difficult job. The thrill of hearing that he was appointed to West Point was, was the, the highlight for me and, of course, for his family. But, uh, Jeff, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share, my, uh, share my screen and show the pictures. And, Wonderful. Uh, and most of the, all the good pictures are the ones that Michelle took. She's, uh, she's one, of your, uh, one of your fellow attendees. Uh, Michelle is uh, quite an eye for photography. So if you will excuse me, I'm, I'm going to leave you and bring up the screen with just the photographs of, um, of Fort Putnam. Well, thank you both very, very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. This is the first opportunity I've actually had to give a tour presentation in uniform since I commissioned on Saturday as an army officer and it means the world to be here. Um, Fort Putnam, as you know, is very, very historic for all the reasons that Rob had talked about, but for a few others as well. You know, West Point, as Rob discussed, was called the key to the continent by General George Washington. In fact, he had trained his troops right there on the plane. And his headquarters was up in Newburgh, New York, which is just north of West Point. But I don't know if, do we have a map of West Point in order to see that curve in the Hudson River? One of the interesting things about West Point in particular is the geography of it. There is an S curve of the Hudson River as it goes around and it connects down to New York, New York, 50 miles south of West Point. But as Rob mentioned, the British knew, as did the colonists, that if you took the Hudson River, you could win the war. And Washington knew that, and there was many, many fortifications along the Hudson River, including Fort Montgomery, West Point, uh, Fort Putnam, a handful of others as well. And they had the great chain across that S curve of the Hudson River. There's, and the chain is actually still down there, which is really cool to see. Doug, Michelle, and Diane, as well as the Marty and Sharon Dunkel all saw the chain. And that stretched across the river at the S curve. And the, the chain's goal was to, should the British try to bring their ships up the Hudson River and cut the colonies in half. They could bring that chain up and stop the boats and fire down upon those boats from the fortifications along the river as well as from Port Putnam up above. 
And it's a good couple, it's a good mile or two down to the river from Fort uh, Putnam up there, as we saw. But believe it or not, those cannons could hit the S curve of the Hudson River and take out some boats. Huh. It was quite remarkable. And it's pretty high up there. It overlooks everything at West Point. Overlooks everything. You can see the S curve of the river. You can see the mess hall. You can see our barracks. You can see the commandant's house. You can see everything from Fort Putnam. And part of that too is a lot of people wondered over the years, why was West Point and Fort Putnam not challenged? Fort Montgomery, 10 minute drive down the road was absolutely destroyed by the British overrun and destroyed and their navy as well as the infantry that they had at the time as well and the answer to that is simple it was european fortified by guys like kashutsko and a few others of his uh, proteges but one of them being general putnam they worked together rather closely there on the fortifications at west point but West Point was never, ever challenged. That S-curve was never challenged because it was European fortified. So let's go to Diane's pictures here. So as you can see, there are cannons all along the very tippy tops of the fortress. And those, those cannons were actually based on a drawing and those are recreated. The cannons themselves are, they are the cannons. However, the wooden uh, pedestals that they are sitting on are, are remade from donations by West Point graduates over many, many years. Mm. So the cannon and martyrs were placed according to drawings by Lieutenant Louis Alexandre Berther, rather familiar name. A he's a Revolutionary War topographical engineer. And they replaced those cannons based on his drawings. So Fort Putnam actually predates West Point as an academy. West Point is your oldest occupied military fort in the entire continental United States. Fort Putnam was started on 1778 and has continued to operate even through tours, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, since then. I cannot say exactly when troops stopped using it as a fortification along the Hudson River. I can tell you that it began to be used as a military academy in 1802. So let's check out some of those pictures that Diane has. So when you enter the fort, you oh, want to go back this. to that picture, Diane? The first one? Yeah. I, there you go. I don't have a I don't have a picture of you with the big key. They had to give Jeff the key. Well, to actually oh, the key this. was unbelievably big. Unbelievably it big. was yeah. very gothic looking. But what was so funny is the actual key to get into the fort was a regular key that was attached to it that looked like a car key. So as you can see from the picture, those that gate is what when you enter the fort. From the northwest side, that is the actual gate you'll come to, and that is the one and only entrance to the fort. So when you show up inside the fort, to your immediate left is going to be this very steep stairway. And that'll lead you upstairs towards all kinds of cannons. To your direct front is pretty much common, like, like a common area, which we believe to have been used by soldiers in the Revolutionary War for fires and kind of like a gathering area. Now, underneath those doors there, if you wanna go back one, please. So underneath there is where the enlisted soldiers actually resided. There are, you can peek inside there even, and it looks quite bleak after 200 plus years, but it was believed to look rather similar even back then. I couldn't imagine trying to sleep inside something rather convened as well as um, so high up. It's, it's, it's really, really something else. 
So if you want to go to our next picture. Oh, good. So this is on top of, once you go upwards, up the stairs to the left there, you'll see all kinds of cannons up and along. And these cannons range from six pound cannons to eight pound martyrs. And everything really is aimed in such a way that it's pointed down at the Hudson River on purpose. I've always personally been curious if we could try it out and see if it could actually hit the river from here still, personally. But obviously that would be hard to do with the academy, as you can see right down there, if you miss, you know, Lord help us. But yeah, these are some of the beautiful cannons that they have up there. And you can see based on this picture, especially the size of them, the sheer size. They are extraordinarily large and long. And it took a very, very hefty gentleman to actually lift the cannonballs into this and swab and clean the cannons and then to actually fire off the cannons. I would really like to see the build on some of those guys if you think about it because they had to be very, very spectacularly built. So there's a good picture of Doug, Diane, and I. And they have just cannons up and along the fort facing north towards the Hudson. And Michelle's not in the pictures because she took all the good pictures. That's right. Thank you for that. I should have noted that. Oh, and by the way, here, explain who, what this building is. And the wheelbarrow is, is a 20th century, by the way. It is. The officers, quarters, as well as the actual headquarters of the little tiny fort there. It's actually really not that big of a fort. If you walk around it, it really would take you, what, 10, 15 minutes to walk the entire perimeter. I'm trying to think. That was another cool picture. What is that? Is that a case on? It is. Jeff, I don't know if you realize, but the little video that I had prepared for you this morning, it took me almost an hour to find the original army song. <laughs> Everybody my age is going to know the uh, when the caissons go rolling. They mm -hmm. don't do that anymore. The only song these are the caissons. The only song they want to play now is the new one, the newer version called "Army Strong," which was a very nice song. But now, well, the I Army wanted Strong them. is kind of like a recruiting. Okay. song for our commercials the army song still exists you know march along sing our song that actually was entirely proper yes now jeff what is this what is this particular canon why is it and what is it saying on it uh can can you read so what's kind of interesting about this canon is that it looks as if as it, it there's a crown on there right yes well, that was actually one of George III's cannons from the Revolution that the Revolutionary War's troops at Fort Putnam nice. repurposed and managed to use against them. Very good. Which is really cool. Very good. We actually have a lot of those cannons down by Trophy Point from every American conflict all the way back to the Revolutionary War. So you're talking the Revolution, the, eight, the War of 1812, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, you name it. And we have captured cannons that the U.S. has collected as war trophies down there close to the river by the Hudson. Does anyone have any questions for Jeff? Oh, I was just going to say, Jeff, tell them about those you know, the first and last cannons. Oh, okay. So we actually have... If you come out of the library, underneath where Fort uh, Putnam comes out, on the side of Bartlett Hall, where I took all of my science classes, that building still gives me chills because I, I hated science and math. Um, they have the first cannon shot in the Civil War, at, shot at Fort Sumter. And the last cannon fired in the Civil War shot at Appomattox. Hmm. And it's right there on the side of the building. Okay. I, I just want to point I out didn't... one other thing. When you're uh, 
when you see the stairways, they're all curved going up to the right. That's because that's the only way you can't draw your sword and hack away at people if the stair is curving to the right. You can that's only pull right. the sword if you're going downstairs. Wow. That's right. They closed the fort to the public a number of years ago. And believe it or not, it was because the tour guides retired. And I don't know if you guys will ever have a chance or if you've already been there. But the other part of the tour that Jeff gave us was, of course, West Point. I was bowled over by not just the history, but it's one of the most beautiful um, museums. I, I challenge any, any museum in the country to, to have the same audiovisual displays that West Point does. It, it's absolutely stunning. So if you ever have a chance, you can hook up with, with a cadet, find, you know, find a way to meet. I, I know a lot of people at West Point as well who would be happy to give any tour to any one of you. It was just there are still remarkable. There. All right, so I'm finished with my chatter. Uh, who else would like to ask a question? Oh, uh, Mary Jo, he, she is a Putnam descendant. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't hear the very beginning. So what year exactly was Fort Putnam built? It was 1778. Was. How close is it? No, just how close is it to Fort, to um, West Point? Is it really right there? It overlooks everything. I mean, you can see it, especially in the winter. I can look up at any point and see it right above the chapel. I would say it's probably, gosh, 800 to 1,000 meters if you took a direct shot. But, of course, it's up way up on that mountain. Okay, I'd love to come and see it someday, but I don't know if I'll <laughs> ever get there. Well, I'll pray for that. Okay, anybody else have any questions for Jeff? And let's see, did Rob, I don't know, I guess Rob may have, Rob may have hung up, but uh, if it weren't, no. are you still, oh, there you are, Rob. Oh, yeah. I just put it on mute. I guess you couldn't oh. find it. Um, That's right. If it hadn't been for, raise your hand if you're, if you're a member of the Lehigh Valley American Revolution Roundtable. Okay, there's a couple of us. If it hadn't been for joining that group when I first moved here to uh, Pennsylvania, I was born and raised in Ohio, but um, moved here to Pennsylvania, and there was an advertisement for a, a, a meeting about uh, history, and I thought, oh, well, I don't know anything, so maybe I'll go, and I've been a member ever since. But it was through that association, and if you have one in your area, I highly encourage people to join. They're um, a, knowledgeable, a knowledgeable group of people you are. I'm sorry our president uh, wasn't able to get on the line. He, he was going to be uh, with his mom today, and I think he's probably still there. But um, it's, uh, it does us good to, to go back look at who actually helped bring the country together, rescue it from King George. And it, some of the, Rob was, Rob's book on um, Israel Putin, highly recommend that. Doug, Doug's crazy about it. But other authors have talked about what women did during the American Revolution. Um, it, you know, I, I sat there at most of these meetings just dumbfounded at, uh, at everything I didn't know, and uh, I, I I look forward to to more and more of these uh, events. But out there in uh, um, in the Western Reserve, which is what uh, what um, General Putnam and his family um, ventured out. It, to see was um, uh, was Ohio, and uh, if you ever get to Campus Martius Museum in uh, in Marietta, Ohio, it's well worth the trip. But if you don't, if you can't go, Campus Martius has a website, um, and it's Campus Martius, and they also have a Facebook page 
where they talk about, of course, General Putnam, but also um, historical things, um, the house. Today they had a, a, a video on the, um, the history of the Conestoga wagon. Like, you know, who knew? I mean, it's our history, our history is getting lost a little bit and our young people, unfortunately, are, um, are not able to, oh, we're, we don't pass everything on, but then again, you know, we don't always have the opportunity. We're not always invited to go into the schools and say, hey, have I got some stories about old people for you? <laughs> you know, kids, they don't want to hear that. But the best we can do is to keep it as interesting as we can. And Rob, I look forward to your book. Um, it's coming out in uh, August now, uh, thereabouts. And uh, of course, your book on Israel Putnam, as my brother Doug said, Israel Israel was, he, he was, uh, um, he was the, he was the mountain man. What, what Dougie was, what, 60 years old, Rob, 60 years old when he, when he uh, enlisted or was, was called up. And um, he was, yeah, he was, he was 57 uh, at the time of Bunker Hill. And then uh, he finished his service when he was uh, 61. And that was only because he had a stroke. <laughs> I got one yes. other thing I want to say, uh, okay. Jeff. When you gave us the tour, when you gave us that tour, I didn't talk about it to you, but I'll tell you now. I, you know, I did uh, eight years in the army and quite a bit of combat, and then I did three uh, three years in Iraq and Afghanistan. And when I was looking at the uh, at the cadets walking around West Point, naturally it's a guy thing. So I was sizing myself up to them, thinking. <laughs> Was I ever that tough? And the bottom line is, no, I don't think I was. And, and that includes the women. When you see how focused they are and, and how dedicated and how ripped they are, and of course they have to go through all the scholastics, mm. I'm amazed. I was in awe of the type of personnel I saw at West Point, mm. including you. And I just wanted you to know that. Well, I appreciate that very much, Doug, and I, I will say, I will second that because the one thing I've been saying a lot the last few days, especially after the commissioning, I've had people say, oh my gosh, you're amazing, you've done so many great things, and I'm like, my first words out of my mouth, and I think I said this when you guys were there as well, I wish you could meet my classmates because they run laps around me in every single way, and it humbles you to your core. We expect more great things from you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Hugs to your folks. Thank you, everybody. I will. For attending. Thank you. Uh, good luck to all of you. And if you have any other you know, questions down the road, uh, you can email. Uh, can I, have, I have a question. Uh, please give my sure. information out as well. I will. Go ahead, Joe. I'm not exactly sure where Fort Putnam is located. Go ahead, Jeff. It's on, on post. Yes. Where is it relative to Kosciuszko's yes. uh, Garden? Which? Oh, I love Kay's Garden. It's literally a direct shot. I can see Kosciuszko's statue from the tip of Fort Putnam. You can literally, it's it's the furthest point on the other side of the <coughs> of, uh, of post. I smoke most of my cigars with my friends down at Kosciuszko's Garden. Okay. Great memories there. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that uh, in 2004, I started the Washington Crossing Revolutionary War Roundtable. Did you? Really? So you know Bridget? Yes. Oh, she's been to a couple of our meetings. Great. Have you been to one of our meetings? I have not. Okay. Well, I'd say I live in the middle of, I live near Princeton. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's about an hour, hour sure. and a half up to, up to the sure. college. Well, if you have a meeting, invite us. We'll, we, we'll travel. Okay. Please, please do. You're not that far away. Yeah, she, uh, sorry, sorry that we lost the David Library to Philadelphia. But, uh, thank yeah, me you too. For that. Thank you for sharing that, Joseph. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Kosciuszko's Garden has a lot of special memories. 
Um, every Friday, I would go down there and call home for the first time every week religiously. And the one of my most special memories is when I actually got to take the president of Poland, President Duda, down there to see Kosciuszko's statue as well as the garden and the fountain that's over 200 years old. That's one other piece of West Point that hasn't changed. But the look on the president's face when I, tr I explained to him again, and he knew this, the Kosciuszko contributions to West Point. He made that fort impenetrable, quote unquote, to the British, simply because of his involvement. Like I said, it was European fortified. This is not colonial tactics. This was European battlefield fortifications, and they knew they couldn't challenge it. We have a special treat. Our president just logged on. Hello, Andy. Oh, good. I don't know how special it is. I'm sorry. I got home late. That's okay. We, I, no worries. You were helping your mom. Thank you for... Uh, thank you for... It's another... Another story. <laughs> well, thank you for keeping the uh, Lehigh Valley American Revolution Roundtable going, and you'll get to see uh, you'll get to see. Th I recorded this, so you'll get to see the pictures. And uh, uh, Rob uh, did a, a wonderful introduction, introduced people, I should say, to uh, uh, to General Putnam, and uh, and. Jeff spoke to the pictures uh, that we had, and uh, I have to give credit where credit is due because uh, uh, my daughter Michelle uh, was the one that took all the really nice pictures. Mine looked like snapshots, but um, the uh, the fort is the fort kind of came to life with Jeff's explaining things, and then the second right. half of the tour was, uh, of course, seeing uh, West Point. But all in all, for those of us who right. who didn't r really didn't know much about uh, uh, West Point, I I didn't know much about West Point except it had uh, army guys, you know, and it, it navy now and again. So it was um, it was very moving, and we we have a lot to be proud of in in our military and those and those graduates of West. Right. Uh, we we worked. <laughs> We watched Jeff go through hell <laughs> for you. You really did. <laughs> we did. Oh my God, the suffering was incredible, but he, he stuck to it. I, uh, uh, my heart went. It's out. over now. It's over now. He's he's going to be a, a a tank guy now, right out at Fort Riley. So yeah, I'll be a tank commander. It'll be exciting. Yes, we appreciate it. Well, Andy, Big red uh, one. yes. Andy, if you have, uh, uh, we were just kind of wrapping things up, giving people an opportunity to ask questions, but uh, thank you for all that you do to keep uh, the uh, Lehigh Valley American Revolution Roundtable uh, active. And uh, one of our participants this evening, Joseph Saliga, he's got the, uh, 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 the tell me, Joseph, the Washington- Washington, Washington Crossing. Washington Crossing Roundtable. Washington Crossing. Right. Okay, so and, and we're now going to meet at the um, New Jersey uh, New Jersey State Park. That's where our meetings are going to be from now on. Okay, so we'll we'll be invited as as long as you send us an email. And thank yeah. you, thank Good. you everyone for attending, and uh, we really appreciate it. And I'll make sure that uh, you're able to keep uh, uh, keep in touch with Jeff. He's he does. If you do Facebook, he likes to do, and I know Martin, uh, um, you guys, you do, um, and Sharon, you do Facebook Lives with him. He, uh, I do. Yeah. So you see him with his cigar and, and he's just sharing and, you know, hey, how's it going? So he will, he may be in the army, but he'll never be far from us. If he's not on Facebook, you know, he's, that's right. He's busy doing, doing army work. I'd like oh, to yeah. thank him for, for doing this program tonight and everybody that participated. Mm -hmm. This was new for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been following the other roundtables. 
everybody's sort of experimenting with this. We're in new territory. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll get better at it as we as we continue to go along and and try it. I'm curious, um, I'm, and again, I apologize for coming on late. Uh, how many people did we have? Well, I think at one point we had something like 27, 28. Uh, That's great. And we had um, um, we had a couple of uh, descendants. Uh, Doug is one of them, and Michelle, and uh, from uh, Marietta, Ohio, uh, where uh, Rufus uh, finally uh, ended. You know, his what did you say, Rob? He lived his last thirty-six years there. Um, yeah, his last thirty-six years. 36 he lived to years. age eighty-six. And he. Uh, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Jo was online with us and she still lives in Marietta and she is one who helped uh, organize the uh, the reunion a number of years ago. I can't remember how many years, but it was amazing to see all the cousins. So <laughs> people we never met, but it was uh, a lot, a lot goes into keeping our, our history alive. And one of our speakers, Andy, that you had come and speak, uh, Don uh, Hagist, is that how? Oh I mean? yes, Don. Sure. He he wrote yeah. a wonderful book called "The Revolution's Last Men," and I have that, and it's it's on my list of things to write. But just you know, we have so many things to be proud of uh, those who have gone before and laid the groundwork for uh, young people like Jeff and those of you who have served in the military. Um, I'm just a military appreciator. Never served, I'm just always in awe yeah. of you. I mean, especially served. after Saturday. Saturday. I mean, I just commissioned. Oh. He was commissioned, he was standing in his garage. He was standing in his garage and his mother- well, was my dining room. <laughs> pinned, on, pinned on his bars and he was commissioned via the internet. First commissioning with the commandant. Mm -hmm. And it was, we actually will have the full video here shortly. Um, Melissa, who was my first salute, she mm -hmm. actually has this beautiful camera that we used for the recording using Martin and Sharon's tripod, actually. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, there, there, there are very few times I've ever seen my parents cry. I can count them on one hand. Mm. And I'll tell you, there was nothing more difficult than getting through that oath, hearing my father sob behind me. <laughs> it was it was breathtaking. Mm. And then, of course, around the room, you have soldiers. I had Marines. I had enlisted personnel mm -hmm. and some of their families. Mm -hmm. And it was the most humbling thing in the world to look them in the eye and say, I am going to lead your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and you can count on me. Mm -hmm. That is a very humbling moment. Yeah. That struck a chord with me even now. Mm. Hey Rob or or Jeffrey, I'm not sure which was. Did Rufus have anything to do? There was a pretty um, ingenious way they came up with floating the chain when they needed to and stuff. That was Rufus involved in that in any way? That's a really great question. I'm going to have to look into that. I don't think he did. That was really Kashutsko's baby. Yeah, not as much um, as you think. He, you know, you're, I'm sure it's that absolutely was right. But yeah, that that was that what, Diane. That was the that was the uh, uh, time in in the uh, in Boston when uh, Washington forced the British out of the city, and that's what he did with with Rufus's fortifications on the hills south of Boston, mm. uh, and the cannon that. Uh, General Knox took from Fort Tigonaroga, and all that together forced the British off. And so that was what they saw, those hills south of Boston. And when they woke up in the morning, they could not believe that the Americans had created these fortifications overnight. Yep. For a man, for a man who had, um, what was it, three weeks of, three weeks of schooling, um, 
along with many of his uh, uh, counselors, right. um, they did a remarkable job with with the little that they had. And uh, so, and now we are doing remarkably well with the technology, aren't we? We're we're facing our fears. We're using our we're getting there on our cell phones, whether it's even if it's killing us. So we have. Get it. Like I said, I'm more of a Microsoft Teams kind of guy. Uh huh. But okay. Zoom, this is the first time I've used Zoom ever. Okay. Well, you did a good job. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you again to well, everybody. I should mention that we'll see what the other two programs that I already know we have coming in. Okay. We are going to have one on um, John Andre. And Ooh, that like was scheduled that. for the fall uh, to see if they can do it this way, unless a miracle happens and we get Lafayette back again. And but, don't forget, we can also record. Now, the big, the big challenge is going to be Larry Kidder, if he's going to be willing to do this too in the fall. <laughs> but, but I well, think everybody knows Larry. He's a great guy. Um, won't be able to sell his books directly, but maybe we can work something out. Sure. People can send something in uh, and he exactly. can sign them and all. So, Very good. Uh, yeah. All so, right. Uh, nothing to report. And, you know, those that are know, I'm, I'm doing the generals project. I picked up a couple more, but unfortunately, a lot of the graves are in the hot spots. Okay. And I've been staying low. So, okay. Well, Thank you for there, your, your interest in history, everyone. And Rob, again, look forward to your book. I'm probably going to send you send it to you to be uh, uh, to be signed. I really I, I would like that. All right. Thank you. Dan. And good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks Thank again. You, Thank Take you. Care. Have a good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye.